Okay, hello everybody, hello. My name is Victoria, hello, and welcome to my new vlog. I, for those of you who don't know me, I am an arts and culture writer based in London, and I review new art exhibitions, stage shows, film, music and books, and write about them both for my own website and for other people. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to start a vlog because I wanted to investigate other mediums where we can bring arts and culture to life, stimulate discussion, and hopefully give you more insight into new openings, new publications, so that you can decide whether you want to go and see these for yourself or think, nope, not a hope in hell. Uh, but hey, at least we have start of a dialogue, right? So what I'm going to do is every week I'm going to log on hello, and give a roundup of things that I've seen and things that are opening. And also what we'll do is we'll take a single piece each week, whether it's a new art exhibition or a new book, and look at that in more detail. Uh, for example, this week we'll be looking at a book. Uh, we'll be looking at James Rhodes's new publication, Instrumental. And then in other weeks, we'll either be looking at uh, other books that have come out with interesting themes or interesting subjects that I think are worth chatting about. Or also some of the vlogs will be t taped in new art exhibitions that are opening. So you can get a greater flavour of what's on display in these new art ex exhibitions and we can chat more about the artists. Uh, and I think that'd be a great way to bring arts and culture to you in a way that is interesting. So let's see how this goes, right? Okay, good. Okay, we ready to chat about the book? Okay, good. Um, I had to go and get a cup of tea because even though what you just saw only lasted a couple of minutes, I mean, it's a new camera. I, it's taken me an age to film. 90% um, of it I still didn't. Anyway, we soldier on. The book that we're gonna chat about today is this. It's James Rhodes's Instrumental, which was published this week. James is a pianist. Um, he is a pianist that I've seen perform a couple of times and I'm a big fan of his, both not just of his playing but also of his attitude. He has a very um, passionate but rebellious um, approach to taking what is known as classical music, so pieces by the great composers such as Mozart, Rachmaninoff, Beethoven and Schumann, and taking these to new venues away from the very stuffy, alienating classical music halls and out into the wider population. So he plays often at um, clubs across London and music festivals and across the country and across the world. He travels quite a lot now. Um, and he doesn't turn up in black tie and shirt tails or anything like that. I mean, frankly, you're lucky if the jeans and the shirt are clean, but he's great. He's great. Um, but another um, reason why James Rota is an interesting person is because he has been very open about him, his past, where he was raped as a child, as a six-year-old, and this led to a profound mental illness and battle with self-loathing and depression, as you can imagine, as well as the physical toll of the rape and abuse that he suffered as a child. And what he found was the redeeming power of music, how his passion for music has helped him in even the darkest of times. And all of these approaches, his passion for music and the abuse he has suffered and the rape he suffered, and he does talk about how he wants the word rape to be used rather than abuse, um, he poured into this autobiography, Instrumental. Uh, very clever, very clever choice of title. Um, James has been open about the fact that he was writing this for a while and um, anyone who follows him on Twitter will know that he was writing this memoir last year. However, it did not have a smooth publication um, process. It was due to be published before Christmas. And I was actually approached uh, by his publishers and said, would you like to read the book? Um, last August, I think it was. And I said, yeah, sure, send me a copy. I would love to, uh, to read about it. I think it's going to be uh, a fascinating premise for someone to talk so openly about uh, rape and abuse and also how he found uh, help and uh, a, a place, a safe place in music. I, I just thought this was, would, would be amazing. Um, and then it just went silent. And the publishers didn't deliver the book to anyone. And it became clear that something had gone very wrong. What had happened is um, James's book had been caught in a legal process where his ex-wife was suing him because she was concerned about some of the material that was being revealed in a book. And in an unprecedented piece of action, his book was prevented from being publishing, i.e. his book was on the verge of being banned, which in a country which considers itself to have free speech 
was extraordinary. And for a, five, six, eight months, James was battling an extraordinary legal process to get this book published. Hence why now, in May, it has finally been released, and hence why I had to get it on iBook, because the physical copy is only just being published. But anyway, this book has been in the press a lot because of that legal process, but I wanted to take an opportunity to talk about the book itself, because it's a superb book. It is a tough subject matter, be under no illusion about how hard it is to read the passages where James is being raped by his gym teacher, um, how the grooming started, um, but also the passages after that as James carries the burden, carries the shame um, of what he suffered throughout the rest of his life and how that almost killed him and then how music comes in and helps him. Uh, it is superbly written. It is written um, in a very colloquial style. It is very engaging and there are moments where it is very funny but it also it is very dark. Um, the past, one of the interesting things about this is there have been some books written about mental illness. Um, James doesn't invite you to pity him. He talks very honestly at times about how horrible he is as a person, how selfish, how difficult he is to live with. Um, he has extraordinary self-awareness and he is able to communicate that as well as all the things that go on top. So I just wanted to take a moment to read a couple of the things, a couple of the passages, because I think it's important that you get an idea of the way uh, James writes, because I think we don't have that kind of transparency around rape of children. The way we have that now is through these very distressing news reports, whether it's Savile, whether it's, um, well, there's just so many to talk about, aren't there? Uh, it's just frightening. So to have somebody come out and talk about what it's like to be raped as a child and the repercussions of that and to be on it and to be able to convey that in an engaging way is crucial. So. When James talks about um, his, um, what happened to him as a child, he, he doesn't want you to, um, he doesn't want you to necessarily term, use the term abuse. This is rape, as he keeps saying, when you rape a child, it's rape. It's not abuse, it's rape. And to quote James, child rape is the Everest of trauma. How could it not be? I was used, fucked, broken, toyed, toyed with and violated from the age of six over and over for years and years. This is not a book that pulls its punches. Um, he was groomed by a gym teacher in his school uh, and he talks about it here, Mr Lee, um, who James was a very introverted child and um, therefore you sense very quickly that Mr Lee took an opportunity that he could get this child that was a little separate from the rest of the class um, and abuse him, rape him rather. Um, and then James talks about how this was very difficult to hide because of course, like all abusers, Mr. Lee demanded a complicity of silence. Okay, so let's look at the book itself. Um, like I think I mentioned, James is very specific about the use of the term rape as opposed to abuse. Um, and as he writes in his book itself, abuse, what a word. Rape is better. Abuse is when you tell a traffic warden to fuck off. It isn't abuse when a 40 year old man forces his cock inside a six year old boy's ass. That doesn't even come close to abuse. That is aggressive rape. And that really sets the tone of where James is coming from this. He really doesn't want to hide behind anything here. He really is wanting to share his anger and the pain that he goes through mentally and physically every day still from these events from when he was six. Um, and it also shows the level of colloquialism which I, I think is so important that people can be able to relate to this um, and be able to understand as if James is sitting in front of them telling him, telling them his story. So James is raped when he was six um, and his other teachers at the school um, 
he was um, are unable to identify that it is the gym teacher, Mr. Lee, who has groomed and raped James and continues to do so. Even though James withdraws, even though his behaviour changes, it is still not picked up that he is sexually abused. And in fact, as James talks about in his book, he doesn't even open up about the rape until he is in his 30s. So this book then charts the very destructive battles that he had with mental illness and depression. Um, it is becoming easier to talk about mental illness, but there aren't many people who will talk about what it's like to be locked up in a psychiatric ward. Um, there aren't many people who can talk about, who are able to convey the self-loathing and the self-hatred that comes from um, that vicious tsunami of emotions that can come from mental illness and depression when you are constantly out of control. Um, and certainly James is able to be incredibly eloquent and honest about this. He doesn't hide the fact that he hasn't, he isn't always an easy person to be around. There are two parts to instrumental. There is James's um, retelling of the um, rape and the uh, legacy of that on his life. Uh, but there also is another part to instrumental and that is the music. And that is James's great passion for music. And that is um, brought in beautifully through a series of gentle introductions to each chapter where he talks about composers that he admires and how he's able to somehow relate to them because it's probably no surprise that many of these composers also suffered from mental illness and had terrible lives of great trauma and tragedy and he uses that um, to reflect on his own life and um, I think it's also worth, therefore, focusing on the power of music because that is a great theme of James's work. Um, and I wanted to quote a couple of other pieces from within Instrumental where he talks about the music. Because, and this is to quote James himself, the unassailable fact is that music has, quite literally, saved my life. And I believe the lives of countless others. It provides company where there is none, understanding where there is confusion, comfort where there is distress, and sheer, unpolluted energy where there is a hollow shell of brokenness and fatigue. Um, and indeed, some of these composers themselves have horrid lives of, unbro of brokenness and fatigue. Um, he talks about uh, Sch Schubert, who had a, didn't have a great time, um, and this is how he uh, talks about Schubert. Wait. He talks about Schumann. Composers and mental illness go hand in hand, like Catholics and guilt, or America and obesity. Schumann was one of several who suffered from severe depression, throwing himself into the Rhine and then, having not managed to kill himself, sectioning himself voluntarily and dying alone and afraid in an asylum. The ghosts there for James must be profound that he is able to relate to such tragedy because James too tries to kill himself. Um, um, yet there is also great humour, um, particularly when he writes about Mozart. Mozart, the, I mean, the guy was a genius, but he, he was also a bit of a showman, Mozart. And he talks about um, uh, how uh, Mozart is referred to as the, great of, the greatest of them all. And he, as he says, Mozart probably couldn't have given two fucks whether that was the case. Which was nicely put. He probably couldn't have. Um, and it is this uh, constant return to how music makes him feel, how he's able to just put on his headphones and listen to a piece um, from one of the greats, whether it's from Rachmaninoff, whether it's from Mozart, and able to just escape the pain that he's in. Because I think music is an escape for many of us. Most of us don't listen to classical music, but most of us will listen to pop music or rock music, and for that, that works an escape. Um, Eminem often talks about how hip hop was an escape for him. Um, but it's also great that James is therefore able to convey and hopefully bring more people into listening to what is known as classical music. And he does talk about how he's 
put up a lot of pieces on SoundCloud that you can go and listen to for free. Um, and I would definitely agree with James that you should go and listen to some of James's uh, pieces playing on SoundCloud. They are great. But James is also t able to bring into what is such a dark subject matter as great humour. James has a very dry sense of humour. Um, I'm actually going to read you this bit, uh, actually about another composer rather than any of the uh, rape and abuse, where he talks about Schumann. Um, Schubert, rather. And this is what he talks about Schubert. Written by one of the only composers since Mozart who can conceive and compose an entire work in his head before scribbling it down on paper. This is the soundtrack of a man so depressed he started out his student days training to be a lawyer. Touché. Um, I think what I really want to obviously convey from this is how great the honesty is uh, that James has in his book and that continues right to the end. It has a note of upbeat positivity in it is James has um, recently remarried to someone he's very much in love with, um, Hattie, and he talks about that in here. But he also talks about the fact that his battles are not over and probably never will be. Um, and I think that's really important that people realise it's always going to be a challenge for people with mental illness, with depression, that that battle never really ends. And as James sort of wraps it up with this, I've no idea if I'm going to survive the next few years. I've been in places before where I felt solid, reliable, good, strong, and it's all gone to shit. Sadly, I am only ever two bad weeks away from a locked ward. I think from a, from a reader's point of view, there's obviously something very poignant about that. Um, and it's certainly beautifully written, but I think it's also crucial that people are are able to find other people who can be honest about the fact that it isn't always an ongoing challenge. And James's instrumental, this book instrumental, is not only a terrific book about um, somebody overcoming extraordinary obstacles. Uh, to, part, to map out a path in life that works for them. Um, there is a sense of James winning here, even though sometimes it feels that he isn't. He must feel that he isn't. He is every day that he continues to commit himself to something that he loves and he's able to do something that he's passionate about. He is winning. He is beating Mr. Lee. Um, but also the spiral doesn't take long to start again. And that James is able to convey that so eloquently is the great power of instrumental. It is unlikely that you're ever going to read anytime soon a, a more powerful book about child abuse, child rape, and the struggles that come with it, physical as well as mental. Um, and for that, this is a crucial read and huge congratulations to James for making it such an engaging read. Uh, because he has a real talent uh, for conveying the written word as well as being able to play beautiful music. Definitely I would recommend this book. Okay, so quick roundup of, of what I saw this week. I saw two new plays this week. I saw The Harvest at Soho Theatre and The Bow Stratagem at National Theatre. And the long reviews of both of these are on my website, so if you are interested, please go and have a read. But basically, they were two plays I was not expecting much from, two plays that blow me away. Really wonderful. I recommend both of them. The Harvest at Soho Theatre is a deceptively simple play. It is about four people, two men, two women, four young people, and all they've got to do is harvest apples in an orchard. That's it. That's what this play is about. Only obviously it's not. This play is working on a whole lot of levels. And obviously there's some very intriguing power structures that are built and dissolved between these four people. A lot of flirting, a lot of shifting dynamics, shifting loyalties, very clever. But actually this play is also working on a political level. It's a new play written by a Belarusian playwright. And for those of you who are unaware, Belarus is a dictatorship. And the looming eye of the state uh, infuses this piece. It is a piece where a very simple process should be followed. Innovative thought is something you've got to tread very carefully around. Um, and this is all about control and delivery. 
that's all it's about and that's very clever. I recommend The Harvest, it's wonderful. At the under, other end of the scale is The Bow Stratagem, a 300 year old restoration comedy from George Farquhar and it has all the cliches that you'd expect from this high comedy farce where two scheming men who've lost their fortune in London go to a local English town with plans to wheedle the fortune away from a young beautiful heiress um, and then there's lots of subplots involving innkeepers, tavern wenches, French counts, Irish priests, lots of songs, lots of dancing and I'm laughing because I went in with this very cynical view like oh. I mean, this, these plays, what would they be like to my modern feminist eyes? How many carry-on-esque nods and winks can I put up with? And turns out I could put up with a lot. It is extremely well delivered. Simon Godwin directs and he's really nimble around the more difficult areas, but he also really ramps up the cliches and the cast work their socks off. They really embrace the characters that they've been given, make them well-rounded, interesting and the sense of fun is just infectious in that production. It's excellent. I really do recommend it. Uh, so both of those are winners. Definitely go see. Um, and then round up of what's to come. Next week is the first week of June. So we have beginning of uh, places opening their shows ready for the tourist season, new exhibitions, everyone getting ready uh, for summer season. So we're beginning to see the art, new art exhibitions come out. So we've got two next week. We have Agnes Mata at the Tate Modern and we've also got the summer exhibition, that great institution at the Royal Academy. Um, and they're both going to be quite different. Agnes Martin was an artist who had a very cool palette, very cool hues. I'm expecting her exhibition to be very zen. It's the first retrospective of her work, I think in London for about 20 years. Um, and it's great that the Tate Modern is continuing to platform female artists. They've had great exhibitions with Sonia Delaney, which is still open, and Malena Dumas, so it's wonderful that Tate Modern is replacing the Dumas exhibition with another female artist. Go Tate! Well done! Um, and the summer exhibition will be an assault on the senses. It'll be vivid colour palettes, the salon hangings. Uh, it'll be overwhelming. And the summer exhibition last year was excellent. So I'm expecting more of the same. So should be good. Um, stage shows. I'm seeing two new stage shows next week. I'm seeing The Elephant Man which has star casting from Bradley Cooper. Woo! Whatever. Um, but the show does come with uh, very great reviews from Broadway. I think it did very well in the Tony Awards recently with nominations and awards. Uh, so let's see how this goes. And the second one I'm seeing is Gypsy. Gypsy at the Savoy Theatre has had a string of positive reviews and of course has the great Imelda Staunton in the lead role so I am really looking forward to that so hopefully when we meet again next week I can share how those goes with you and hopefully we'll also be looking at another book which I also want to follow on a similar theme uh, because I think it's interesting how mental illness and depression has become uh, easier to talk about so we'll also be talking about another book another writer that has been investigating their own struggle with that so come back next week have a good week